Welcome to Strike Back Weekly, where I talk about random stuff I find interesting. So, uh, let's get right into it. We all guessed it was coming, and we all hoped it was coming. But this week, Greg Silverman, president of productions at Wanderers, has confirmed, via the Wall Street Journal, that a Justice League movie is definitely on the way. And it will follow Zack Snyder's still untitled Man of Steel sequel. Greg Silverman said it will be a further expansion of the universe. Superman vs. Batman will lead into the Justice League. Silverman says that the script for Justice League is still in development and there is no release date set, but likely 2018. But Zack Snyder will return to direct the film. Silverman kept quiet on exactly which heroes will join the trinity of Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman in the Justice League movie. But the recent casting of Ray Fisher as Cyborg and rumors of Flash, Nightwing, Aquaman, Martian Manhunter, Green Arrow, and just about anybody else that has ever been in a DC comic book could give you some examples. As for a solo Wonder Woman movie, Wonder Bros has no current plans for one, but they are open to the possibility. That is our hope, said the president of marketing, Sue Cole, with the right script that could be valuable when the world is ready for her. Now, according to Latino Review, the Justice League movie is aiming for a May 5th, 2017 release date, and that the Justice League movie will shoot back-to-back with the Man of Steel sequel. And to top off all that Justice League news, I got a new casting rumor for you. Matt Damon is being sought after to play Aquaman. Yeah, you heard me right. Ben Affleck's close friend and collaborator Matt Damon may be up for the role of Aquaman. Jason Momoa has also been rumored for the role, as I said last week, and he is expected to appear in Batman vs. Superman in some capacity. Badass Digest reports that it's not clear if Aquaman will be joining the team, but they've heard that early drafts of the script did feature the King of Atlantis, reimagined as more of a barbarian. So there's that. Now let all that sink in and let me know what you think about all that. And while we're talking about comic book movies, if you're looking forward to Josh Trank's Fantastic Four reboot, here's something that might make you lose some hope in it. While talking to IGN, producer Simon Kingsberg revealed that the Fantastic Four are not actually going to be called the Fantastic Four in their own movie. Going on to say the Fantastic Four movie is in some ways a reboot and in other ways a standalone origin story. By the end of the movie, we don't call them the Fantastic Four, and they're not celebrity superheroes. The tone of the movie is much more grounded and real and gritty, more in the direction of Chronicle than in the direction of the original Fantastic Four movies. Now, it's true that the other Fantastic Four movies weren't that great, but I think they got the main point of what and who the Fantastic Four were across more or less I guess although my personal thought on Josh Trank's reboot is that it's really going to suck as in I've read a few interviews of what he's had to say and he has absolutely no idea who the Fantastic Four are or what they do and they should probably just call this movie Chronicle 2 because that's probably what's going to be I've also seen some reports online that the Mole Man might be one of the bad guys in the movie So that would be interesting to see how they do. And I still think it's going to suck, but hey, maybe there might be some hope for it out there. Nintendo will again forego a traditional E3 press conference this year at E3 in favor of a digital presentation. They will now hold what they are calling a Nintendo Digital Event, which is a new kind of video program. The new kind of video program will take place at 9 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday, June 10th. That is Nintendo's typical Tuesday slot, which is one day after Microsoft and Sony hold their press briefings. The digital event will bring news about games coming to the Nintendo platform in 2014 and beyond, but no further specifics were announced. Reggie fils said that we demonstrated last year that we are never afraid to reinvent a proven tactic or to break complete new ground if we believe it will provide the best experience for our fans, followers, and partners. 
Other Nintendo events scheduled for E3 include the Super Smash Bros. Invitational, in which 16 highly skilled Smash Bros. players are invited to the Nokia Theater to compete in Super Smash Bros. Tournament to be played on the upcoming Super Smash Bros. game for the Wii U. This event will also be live-streamed all day during E3. Nintendo Treehouse Live, which is a special booth on the E3 floor, which will provide attendees in-depth game demos. This event will also be streamed live all day during E3. Super Smash Brothers Smash Fest at Best Buy. Last year, Nintendo and Best Buy teamed up to allow shoppers to play unreleased Nintendo titles, and the two companies are continuing their relationship this year. Best Buy shoppers will get to play Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U at their stores, though we're still waiting on details about specific dates and which stores will have the games. If you were looking forward to the socially connected racing game Drive Club, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. The PlayStation 4 racing game has been delayed for a second time and will now arrive on October 7th. The PlayStation Plus version of Drive Club will also be available on that day, though we're still waiting for more details about this version. Drive Club was originally targeted to be released as a PS4 launch title back in November 2013, but Sony delayed the game the first time in October of that year to release in early 2014. One of the reasons for the delay is that the game lost its director, Cole Rogers, and the studio cut a number of jobs earlier this year. October 7th is being a very busy day for new releases, as other major games released that day include Dragon Age Inquisition, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, and Alien Isolation. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about this week is Maze Games with Gold. Microsoft has announced two Xbox Live games with Gold for the month of May. The first half of the month which is May 1st or the 15th, Xbox Live Gold members can download Dust, an Elysian Tale. It's a side-scrolling game that is supposedly similar to Metroid. I never played it, but I might give it a try because it's free. And the second half of the month, May 16th through the 31st, brings Saints Row the 3rd. This is considered the best in the series, and I haven't played this one, but I definitely will be playing this one because I hear it's really good. And make sure you check out down below for two more stories. One being if uh, Adam Warlock might be on his way to the Marvel Cinema Universe. If you don't know what an Adam Warlock is, yeah, you're probably not alone in that. But some people do, probably. Probably. And the second one being the Star Wars Episode 7 cast was announced. I, don't, I just don't want to talk about that because I have no hope in that movie at all. So, yeah. And that is everything for this week. So uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. That would help me out a great deal. And uh, make sure you watch next week where I will travel to Mordor. Not actually going to do nothing there. I'm just going to travel around, see what's up. Yep, so I'll see you then, guys.